Hello, everybody. Welcome to this October 10th, 2020 event where we will be talking about who are the beyond verbal autists and what are they doing here for humanity. And I'm certainly a parent who doubted a lot of these things um, many years ago. And now here we are in 2020 as things break down. So I'm joined today by uh, Gail and Lyrica. I'm so honored to be uh, working with you. And um, this is the first time, I mean, we've only just recently met in the last 10 days or so, and it's just been like, you know. Um, so I'm really honored to have both of them, both of you here, definitely pioneers and path cutters. I'm also joined by Alex Marcou. We'll give uh, each of these brilliant people a, a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, let me just run through some housekeeping kind of uh, issues. So we will you know, introduce ourselves, talk a little bit amongst ourselves or uh, introduce the topic. And then we will open up to uh, question and answers based on who is here. Please mute yourselves so that we can get as clean a recording as possible. The recording will be up on our YouTube channel, Munoros One, and also the audio will be on our uh, podcast. So people will be able to listen in in those other ways. Um, what other housekeeping issues do I have? So yes, yeah, so we'll, when we open up to questions, um, yeah, this is, I'm not sure how big the group is going to be, so please uh, use the chat room um, if you want to comment or uh, ask a question. And depending on how many questions there are, I'll ask you, uh, I'll ask you to unmute yourself if you want to uh, ask the question live. Uh, might not get to all the questions based on, uh, due to time. So with that, um, Let's kind of get started and everyone uh, just sit comfortably and um, uh, yeah, this is going to set the energy, this image will set the energy Aww. for the, uh, oh, the group. Oh, Hello. Yeah, I'm just going to mute people if you're unmuted, if you're muted, not muted. Um, uh, just to get a clean uh, recording and, and let's get into this uh, discussion here um, and I'm going to have Gail and Lyrica introduce themselves first tell us who you are for people who might not know of your work are you ready for us <clears throat> absolutely go ahead hey um just thank you all for being here and um thank you susan for putting this event together and alex for being a co-host of the crew and um i had a very had a very interesting experience in getting ready for this conversation today our book autism um was published over nine years ago and um <laughs> so i literally had to go to the shelf uh, pick it up dust it off and reconnect to it. And um, in that process, I, I closed my eyes, took a deep breath, held it in my hand, and I had this huge vibrational charge go through my body um, into every cell of my, of my biology. And then I remembered that um, I heard from some parents of NVAs, and Lyric and I use the, still use the old fashioned word NVA, because to us, that's a really endearing term. It's kind of our best buddies. So um, that's where we are in, in conversation wise. But these parents told me that when their beloveds were having a rough day, they would sometimes see them go to the coffee table, pick up this book, um, hold it and walk around the house. And all of a sudden they would feel better. And the way I would explain that now would be um, energetic entrainment, that they don't have to read this book. Um, they can just feel the vibration, um, kind of like through osmosis. And, um, and then I opened up the book and I was touched by its sheer beauty. Um, the beauty of, 
um, and the poetry and the heart resonance of Lyrica's words and messages. And the three other NBAs who um, were also co-writers in the book. And then I was touched by Lyrica's artwork and I'm gonna try to get this up if y'all can see this or not. Um, um, that's in the middle of the book. Um, Flames of Purification, um, Merkaba and Transit to Higher Dimensions, Heart in Motion. Um, I missed one verse, okay. Angel Scene and Autism. And then if, and throughout the book, there are, um, I call them Lyrica's mantras that are like energetic pillars like this one. Um, souls joined under the canopy of autism love will birth the new land of all. And um, we were very blessed in 2011 when this was published to receive um, an Indie Excellence Book Award for interior art design and also for uh, runner up for the cover with the chrysalis gold grid on it. And then I went into the book a little bit deeper and I was touched by um, the message of hope of Lyrica triumphant story rising above her very, very bleak beginnings. And so part one of the book is li literally Lyrica's story from birth to about age 33. And, um, and then I went deeper and part two of the book, I was touched by the transmission quality of the 11 chapters that Lyrica wrote in a higher vibrational language coming in from her vast consciousness in the higher dimensions with the ability to really open up and inspire soul awakenings and spiritual upgrades. And the reason I know this is because um, several people, um, in fact, a significant number of people let me know that was precisely their experience. And then um, I was, I was touched literally by the retouched by the, by the title, the awe in autism and even the subtitle. Um, autism mm. is a hidden key to our spiritual magnificence. And in the part one, my favorite chapter is autism teachers. And it's Lyrica and her three friends talking about all of their multidimensional gifts. Um, and you can see on the back of the book, I don't know if you see it, but um, they talk about telepathy, soul traveling, <laughs> healing with light, merging with nature, communing with angels, greeting earth energies and many, many more surprises. And um, they do so not to draw attention to themselves, <clears throat> but to show us who we are and who we can become when we get on our spiritual path. And they're here to take us by the hand and by the heart and, and lead us, lead the way forward. And so um, this experience today has um, been a bit of an epiphany for both of us. Mm. And charged this up, and we've decided to um, sort of repurpose this book and even energetically re release it, um, mainly because of the work that everybody um, on this call is doing. Uh, Susan, your, your chapter in the book, Alex, your book is going to be a miracle for particularly those people that are not mm -hmm. as um, enlightened, maybe, about autism um, from a personal or even a, an outsider's perspective. And, um, and all the people on the call, all of the um, typers that are putting things up on the internet and the artists and the musicians, the way it's being paid. Um, and so we're gonna try to put this out again and see what happens. Um, and as Susan will let you know, um, autism is actually offline right now on Amazon. So if anyone wants a book, you have to email me at gail at autism, A-W-E-T-I-Z-M.com. I'll be happy to send you one, autograph it, personalize it. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you, Gail. So exciting. So exciting that, um, you know, that I book was. Again, because it is now winged, like wings, to find hearts and souls open and ready. Some of it's telepathy, some of it's typing.
Thank you. And I think it's a very inspiring to see Lyrica and how she communicates with you that what is possible. It tells, shows us what's possible. So uh, Lyrica, at any time, if you have a comment you want to chime in, just, <laughs> just let us know. <laughs> you'll have the floor, you'll have our, our undivided attention if you have anything that, else that you want to say and share with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Alex, if you want to introduce yourself. Absolutely. Uh, first, I, you know, I want to thank everybody for showing up and being here and being on this planet right now. And, you know, I'm excited to talk about this because, uh, you know, it's been a real journey for me. It's been six years. This book has been six years in the making and actually probably longer since Gail uh, mentioned that I, uh, I, autism came out in 2011. I met them right before it came out. Um, but I'm not going to tell you anything about me. You can learn about me on my website or, um, you know, but I would like to share about this new book that's just come out. It's the, it's, um, the Unsuspected Heroes, and it's the first book in this new series. It's a visionary fiction series, uh, and it's uh, called A Journey to the New Earth. And it's actually inspired by some real events. It's um, inspired by, initially inspired by three nonverbal autistics, one of which was um, our dear Lyrica. And, uh, you, you know, it's actually, this is a, a multidimensional story, but uh, it's a story about a, a love story between a mother and a child. And the mother is Rebecca. And yes, it is a Gale lookalike. Um, and, and of course, Ami is the nonverbal autistic and Ami is, I guess, the Lyrica lookalike. And you know, the mother, you know, she just won't give up on her nonverbal daughter uh, when society has given up, when me the medical community uh, apparently has. And uh, Ami uh, is, you know, she has a painful existence. She, um, and she ex escapes to the uh, higher realms, the realms of the ascended master, masters and the archangels and the galactic beings. And uh, you know, she stays there until something happens between the mother and child. And Ami wakes up, she remembers who she is, and she knows she's here to save the planet. But uh, in order to do so, she needs to reach others like her all around the globe. And how can she do that when she can't even Outer a word, right? So there's one other uh, character that's somewhat uh, important, and that is a, a woman by the name of Levi. And Levi is on her own journey of awakening. And she's told um, that she is, of all things, a star seed, and she is in complete denial. But there is one thing she intuits, she knows it's important for her to do, and that is she needs to help Ami. She needs to somehow help Ami. Uh, I mentioned this is a, um, a multi-dimensional story. There's a backstory in this. And in that story, um, basically humanity, we find that humanity is in a time loop and um, it keeps destroying itself early in the 21st century. And, you know, that loop, we learned that that loop was created by the masters themselves. Um, they love humanity so much, they want humanity to have a chance to ascend during the 21st century. Because without it, uh, let's face it, without it, um, humanity is going to devolve, not evolve, but devolve and fall to the bottom of the food chain. So, you know, the Ascended Masters come up with this very creative solution. They're going to execute project last ditch effort to save the planet. And, uh, you know, what they're going to do is many of these Ascended Masters and galactic beings are going to reincarnate. They're going to embody in human form all around the world 
walk among humanity with the intention of raising the frequency of the planet. Why? So that humanity can ascend. Who are these people? Who are the people around the planet? It, they are the unsuspected heroes, and they are indeed the autistics. They are the autistics around the planet. Um, I just want to say a couple things. You know, this project, you know, it, I'm not the only one involved in this project. I might be the face and the author of the books. But I ha there's a whole team of autistics, parents, and friends that support me on this adventure. And it is an adventure um, as we journey to the new, the new earth. And, you know, I just want to say I need to honor them. They're silent. They rem remain um, humble. And they are doing a service to the planet. And I thank them. They know who they are. And I also, I need to celebrate um, Gail and Larica, as well as Susan and Sammy. Um, you know, these are, they are very brave. They are bringing this work publicly um, to the world about what the autistics are doing. And they're not only great inspirations for my stories, uh, but you know, they're really, they are real heroes and I thank them. And like I said, if you're interested in knowing anything else about me, visit my website. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Boy, there's a lot, a lot more I could say. Um, but let me kind of introduce myself for people who might not know who um, I am, if you're just tuning into some of our work. Um, yeah, I'm Susan Orles, I'm mom to Sammy that you see kind of behind me. Um, and uh, for those of you listening, for any parents who might think, well, I have no idea how to connect with my child, or um, I want to believe that my child is multidimensional and a master. Um, but, you know, I'm just not, and I don't know how to uh, accomplish that. Um, let me just say, I was definitely a hardwired parent to the 3D realm and, you know, went through lots of challenges myself. Sammy is 21 now. Um, she went through the uh, special education system. And a lot of the a lot of traditional what we call traditional treatment modalities that um, our school systems are are promoting and we did we did all of that and she you know nothing really changed her so to speak um, but my awakening began probably in 2009 or so when I was diagnosed with breast cancer and that kind of uh, Get, got me reflecting on who I am and it, that was probably my real awakening and I talk more about that in my chapter in uh, the evolutionary healer book um, but yeah I was definitely not not awake and uh, was afraid to even buy into this idea that Sammy could be multidimensional that she could be spiritually this vast being in this body and definitely one of the biggest blocks, I think, from stepping into that, uh, believing what I was experiencing with her was that, well, it all sounds nice that they're multidimensional and they're spiritual and they, they're souls, but in this reality, in this 3D reality, it's, it's a pretty harsh world. It's a pretty harsh existence. And so um, that doesn't take care of who they uh in their adult life, right? It doesn't address the vulnerability of who they are as adults. So that was a, I think that was one of the biggest roadblocks for me to make that transition. Um, but, you know, Sammy, she wasn't gonna change um, in, in the sense of making her more 3D-like. And, um, the more I fought it, the, the, the more challenging it became. And the more, I would say, the more outbursts she had, she had because I was um, coming up against something that was not really serving who she is, you know. So um, at some point, gradually at some point, you know, um, I, ma I made some changes. And I was having 
multi-dimensional experiences as I describe in the chapter after I was uh, attuned to uh, do Reiki. And then I met um, Susie Miller and went through that process. I got Lyrica and Gail's book, Autism, um, and some other things in there uh, in, in the awakening process. And uh, it is a process, um, but I think the, the good thing now is that the energy on the planet has changed so much that people can make the, the changes much, much faster than uh, what we had to go through in the you know 10 years or so. So, you know, I encourage people, parents especially, and therapists, you know, if you work in the schools, it's very, very valuable to have someone who believes in these kids and sees them differently, even if the school system or the, the, the aides or teachers might not see them. So if you're an aide in the class and you, um, you know, are experiencing these individuals from a different perspective, from a heart perspective and a soul perspective, I think that alone can really uh, help support many of these uh, individuals. And not just, I want to say, just not just the autistic individuals, but all of these, what we call special needs kids. And some of you might know, we, we also have a child, um, and our older son has Down syndrome, and he is very, very hard-faced. And, you know, he, um, he has kept, he has enabled Sammy to be here by his heart coherence. So um, I think that's why they came, it kind of came in together. And I also have a, um, we also have a younger son who's 19, a neuro, neurotypical child. So we have the experience of parenting these, these different kids. And this shift in consciousness, what we call shift in consciousness, uh, exiting out of the 3D uh, matrix, um, uh, the, the last ditch effort, right, to, to get us uh, vibrating higher is not just for these autistic individuals, but it's for the entire planet. Because just witnessing even from what my younger son grew up with in the educational system um, and what, what doesn't, what doesn't really work, what doesn't really serve uh, the soul nature of who we truly are. And that's what this is about. It's not just for us. The, our kids, our autistic kids are not here to, to cause um, karmic lessons for the parents. There's something much, much greater and bigger at play here. And uh, we all can do our individual part. We wanna encourage families to do their part by supporting they're autistic individuals um, and uh, therapists, teachers, paraprofessionals. If you can see these individuals differently, you'll, you'll help to support them in, in a school environment. So, you know, this is kind of just the beginning because we're, we're really witnessing the breakdown of, of 3D beginning, beginning this year. So I feel like I've gone past the allotted time that I wanted to uh, go. But yeah, this is, this is huge. This is really big. And I was excited to be invited to, to participate in the chapter of Evolutionary Healers. And that's a book about, um, it has different perspectives from different uh, awakening and ascending visionaries, let's say, and different strategies to deal with, uh, work through different uh, milestones, let's say, in the awakening process. And the, what I would say, the unraveling process unraveling who you thought you were, unraveling the belief systems that we have been uh, entrained to, to be. So uh, I was excited to participate in that chapter because it introduced that, I, that notion of multidimensionality to a whole other group of, of people. Uh, and earlier this year, I had set my mind to, I think it's time to write a book. And Lo and behold, like, you know, a couple of weeks later, um, this woman, Ariadne, that I know from another forum that I belong to, and we've been sharing what some of the work that we were doing. And it's, that group is made up a lot of very advanced star seeds and indigos, and they could really feel what we were bringing in. And so they have a great appreciation for what these uh, multidimensional beings are doing, because 
in that group, they are witnessing what they, what these kids are doing. They're redesigning the architecture of our dimensionalized system and took us out of, got that third dimensional consciousness known as the first harmonic universe to vibrate, to move it to a higher vibration. And that's why everything is now able to break down. I know that's more complex than probably what most of you want to know. But there are groups of people that are that can see what these uh, individuals are are doing. So um, that's how we got invited to participate in that chapter. So we want to bring this consciousness out to the entire planet. Uh, and this meeting then is to support support that, but also to encourage parents and then other paraprofessionals to. Um, to begin to ask how, uh, who you are really, and how you can support these individuals. So I said a lot there. Um, any other comments from my, uh, my co-hosts here? Susan, this is Gail. Yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. um, Lyrica just said something very important. She just said that um, through this conversation that there's a very large cluster of NDAs in their obviously light body or form mm. um, they're here and they want to be felt and I, I, I'd like to maybe preface that by uh, sharing a little bit of my own experience in this um, um, kind of uh, what's possible and then maybe we could have just a couple minutes for the group to just to sort of tune into the their presence if that's um, okay with everybody but I have to say when I was like at age 60 and diagnosed with um, Asperger's. And that's when I really owned the fact that, um, okay, I um, have been very shielded all my life. Um, I have all these facades in front of me that um, are sort of the fake me looking like I've got it all together, where inside I'm really broken. And really it was Lyrica and the three co-writers of the book um, in their presence, that I found my first safe friends. Um, in their presence, I could go, and I could really start to unwind all of that false programming. And the reason why I could is because in their presence, um, they lifted me up and trained me into their oneness zone. And they saw me as you know perfect, and, and they didn't see all my wounding. They saw, they saw the truth of me. And in their presence, um, I was able to begin to see my own truth and feel my own truth, my own beauty. And so really they were my first therapist and, and healers. And um, I guess if I had a magic wand or wish, um, I think all that we're doing here today and all the books and everything on Facebook is fabulous. But I think um, when someone has a direct personal experience with, with their light, their energy, their, their power, their truth, um, and I know you have to get through a lot of layers sometimes to get there, um, it's, it's miraculous and, and there's no going back at that point. So um, how would you feel, Susan, um, in the group if we just took like a couple minutes to um, be quiet and just with our hearts come together and honor this, uh, all the NBAs, um, and that's still my turn, not uh, um, turn, very turn, um, for their presence and their, um, what they're doing on the planet and, um, she's she needs to get down on the ground where she's gonna hold that um hold that um presence how would you feel about that oh absolutely i because as soon as you you know said that i mean i can feel i just feel this heat in my heart and yeah let's everyone um you know and even feel into you know feel into the heart <clears throat> And even in the pelvic area, because it's like we want to stabilize this energy field of the vastness of being of these, these avatars, these true avatars. And if there was ever such a description of love, um, just think about it. Um, these advanced beings choosing to come here now in this very tough world um, without a voice and a body that's totally disorganized. Um, would any of us have that much love for the planet 
to choose to do that. And so I think they really deserve um, all the love that we can give back to them and all the honoring and um, appreciation. Such beautiful souls. They are beautiful souls. And I always remember America's term, the harsh, harshest suits of autism being the physical body. Star seeds in an earthbound suit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Feel the words unveiled. Lift the veil from your eyes. Like I feel the words see through our eyes of what we see in you, which is the beautiful soul. And however that may look to you, each one of you, imagine what your soul might look like. Colors, energy fields, rainbows, whatever that might look to, like to you in this moment. That's the beginning of your connection with these autists is through the soul. So when you can start to imagine what your soul might look like, then you begin to see the wholeness that they are as well. Thank you, my beloved Verica, for blessing my life in such an amazing way, mm. waking me up, mm. showing me mm. what's possible. Being so patient with me in the learning curve. Always supporting me. <laughs> Being my cheerleader. And when we live in alignment to our soul, then things start to flow in. The support that we need starts to flow in. And I feel that I feel that these avatar saying, you know, there's no going back. There's no going back. <laughs> the world that you've known is, is over, it's done. There's no going back. Hallelujah, there's no going back. <laughs> And I feel um, kind of inspired to, to share this. Uh, it's, and it's in, if you have watched any of our planetary synthesis things in, on YouTube on 2017, I had no idea exactly what was going on at that time. Um, but something, they told me that they wanted me to do this uh, thing for six months on, in 2017. And literally, I watched them like, when I said about moving uh, the harmonic universe, like you can imagine like, it's like this, you know, like a, a, an ellipse kind of shape. Um, and 
that they surrounded the energy. They surrounded our first, second, and third dimensional universe with this energy field around it. And uh, all these like energetic lines coming down to, to move it up to the second harmonic universe. And, and now it's all being restructured, but I mean, they literally moved it uh, to a higher vibration. So, um, and that's how, uh, that's how, that's why two, starting in 2018, oh. things started to feel really different and really uh, changed because uh, they, they literally moved it. Um, and so everything is vibrating, vibrating higher. <laughs> Lyris, Lyrica is so excited. Um, so, anything else? Um, Lyrica is still moving it. Okay, all right. Uh, She's dancing with her beloveds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel like everybody just kind of mm. shake your arms and legs out, like really move the refined energy, like the refined energy, uh, meaning that even the, the thinnest sliver of energy that energy cords that runs through you, runs through our mental, emotional, and physical bodies. Just move it through, you know? Move it through us, you know, and circling uh, your hands and your, your feet. Holding your shoulders if you feel called to do so. Um, just uh, allow it to flow, yeah. Thank you, Lyrica. That's Thank you steady. That voice that just came in on the recording. Um, I think that was Lucy. Was that Lucy? Yeah, that's Lucy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sending a message to you, Randolph. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> sure. Okay, I'm going through the chat. Um, see what wants to pop out. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so Marissa said, even in an environment where people don't see the gifts, if just one therapist, aide, or teacher sees the beautiful truth of who the kids are, great shifts happen. Yeah, and Marissa is uh, definitely a master at that, where she can just sit in a state of calm and uh, it changes like that. I know Sammy, she's, she's been able to get Sammy to do things that I could never get her to do. Um, and Randy says, I agree with you. And uh, thank you, Brenda, Derek, and I are loving this mm -hmm. discussion. Um, Tammy wants to know if we could be more specific about how to support the hidden gifts within education when the individual may not be physically ready to follow directions and respond to requests. Well, I want to put that out to, uh, I don't know, Marissa, do you want to answer that? I feel like you have some good insights about that. I'm, I'm looking for the question. Can you repeat it? Uh-huh. Uh, it's in the chat. It says it may be useful to be specific on how to support their hidden gifts within education when the individual may not be physically ready to follow directions and respond to requests. And um, I'm guessing the individual is referring to the, the autistic student? Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. <laughs> it's usually I think about the teachers in that, in that context. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that's that's the thing, um, but what I do is, is let go of the expectation that they need to follow directions. And I start to meet the students where they are and I take their lead and I see where they guide me in, in any session that I'm in. And when that happens, that's when shifts start to occur. Mm. And even if, they, if the student doesn't follow directions, in part of my therapy, actually, I specifically don't give commands. 
And so what helps is by releasing all the pressure of commands and questions and us wanting to pull information from students, I take all of that away. And to even add another layer of pressure release, I don't expect any kind of response to be in any specific way. I let go of all of that. And energetically, the students feel that. I've worked with students of all ages. You know, I can just simply walk into a classroom before I even do anything and the energy shifts. And it's not because I'm doing anything. It's because I'm just fully mm -hmm. present and open to who the kids are, what they are, and just acknowledging the great vastness and intelligence and multidimensionality of their beingness that's what starts to get things shifting <laughs> and and you start to see more and more communication um whatever that looks like for the child it's all different so i hope i hope does that answer the question did that yeah, yeah. well i i mean i i think so um and what comes up sort of as an analogy i think for us, let's say, quote, typical humans, to be able to relate to that is um, how it feels when someone is um, like breathing down your neck and pressuring you to, like, you know, to get something done quickly, like if it's a boss or someone and um, there's a lot of pressure on you to, to perform in a certain way and that how restrictive that can feel, you know. Um, expectations, how restrictive expectations can feel in the body. And these beings being more energetically sensitive, you know, they can feel that as well. And maybe uh, probably are more aware of that than we have been uh, as 3D, as 3D humans. So yeah. does that make sense with that? Would you? Yeah, yeah, and things spontaneously happen. Just one quick story. Um, I was doing a formal language evaluation for a middle school student. And one of the question was, what is a soul? S O U L hmm. and S O L E. <laughs> and the child looks at and said, I feel my soul. You know, that, hmm. you know, and when I told the mom that in the IUP, she, I mean, she, you should have seen her face. It was, it was pretty remarkable. So mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a state of presence that we can be in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think somebody else said it. Yeah, the deep breathing, just breathing. Deep you breathing, can get, yes. yeah, because when you get, when we can get our body kind of more relaxed, uh, it kind of opens up the energy, you know, and. It's taken me a while to learn that, but uh, you know, we still practice that <laughs> at home. Uh, if Sammy's having a rough time, is you know, just start breathing first and relax your body as much as you can. So um, that gets things shifting. Uh, and one of our kids, uh, former teachers, uh, and uh, I don't, she didn't make it with us today. Uh, she'll probably listen to the recording. Um, but that's one of the things that she started doing is heart coherence. So she started practicing heart coherence uh, through at the heart math program. And she's, she's uh, said she's seen just remarkable things happen when, when, she, um, when she started doing that. So uh, let's see, any other questions? Let's see, I'm looking at what other comments or questions. Uh, Shar says there you go. I wish all of my NDA friends could be here. Uh, hopefully they are here in spirit. I feel so privileged to be part of their lives. Well, I think um, I, I definitely feel like all your friends are here, Shar, and they are equally blessed to have you in their life. Uh, you, I know I've seen um, some of your work with Nick, and it sounds like you honor them so deeply that you're able to get uh, you're able to get um, what's the word feedback from them and answers from them through facilitated uh, communication 
Uh, and this is one thing that um, Alex's book, uh, Unsuspected Heroes, uh, kind of goes into as well, is um, about how uh, the main character, you're calling her Ami, huh? it looks like Amy to me, but yeah, it's spelled Ami, which is, I guess, friend. Um, Ami, how her mom stumbles on her intelligence through uh, facilitating the communication. And that's something that Gail uh, uses with Lyrica, as you can see with the letter board. Gail, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Um, well, we have the, am I on? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, we had the vast privilege mm -hmm. of um, developing FC before it had ever been known or brought to the United States. And I asked Lyrica about that um, and she told me that she was eight, eight years old and the first sentence that she typed out that I could understand was, um, and she took my finger to do it, um, I am not retarded, I am intelligent. And boy, that just blew up our world in so many wonderful ways. And, um, but the way she told me that she, that she sort of intuited this whole thing, she said, Mom, I realized I was here with a purpose and I had to have a way to communicate in order to do my purpose so she said i just pulled it in from the universe and i just love that um their ability to really be in oneness and um and maybe not all of them but um when they need something it's almost like it's it's available to them in this larger universe you know we think of, of intelligence being um something we learn in school from the outside in just like you know, spirituality, the thing about religion is the out, is from the outside in, spirituality is from the inside out. Well, to me, their intelligence is not something that we feed into them. It's something that comes from deep within them. And it's not just from within them, it's from like the whole giant universe mm -hmm. that they're connected to in the oneness. And um, it's their library, it's their resource. And so in that way, my my sense is experience and from Lyrica's conversations, um, they're not limited at all. You know, everything they need is available when they need it. Um, so that's the part I love. And I've watched Lyrica's communication develop um, <clears throat> style-wise um, over many years since, I guess, 36 years he's been typing with me. And of course, the way it looks, and I, I have to say, you know, to an outsider, it looks pretty um, questionable who's doing the typing, but we gave up that conversation a long time ago. It's like, okay, believe us or don't, you know, it's, that's, that's your bag, not mine. Um, this is what she says, take it as fact or fiction, I don't care. Um, but anyway, um, her style has really changed. Because in the beginning, it was, you know, kind of um more words and, and they're kind of in such a coded language it's hard to understand um and then it became very poetic and um sort of heart-based and now that she's had this uh recent experience which i'll maybe talk about at some point um in the conversation um and she's much more embodied now physically embodied um and her ascendant ascendant work has become much more sophisticated um, now her language is much more um focused concrete um, physicalized and so it's been really interesting to see that transformation over the years but um Lyrica, what would you say must say my truth i am not a communicator of trivial things i use my voice to reveal truce unseen by most yet available to all who can find their presence in oneness like I have I want to share what's new in my life. Is that, are you open to that? Yes, yes, absolutely. And I'll just give a little background story. Um, for us, this event is um, kind of like a homecoming because 
five years ago, Dirk and I made the decision to step away from our work in autism as advocates, spokespersons, leaders, um, and kind of shed that identity, um, become, come make it because we really knew it was time for us to go into a deep transformation process to really go inward. And um, the last, and Lyrica was very <laughs> conscious about saying, Mom, okay, I, re I wrote this autism book with you. I've done all these blogs. And so I've sort of created a, a template. You know, I, I have the plan on paper, but now I have to become it. And the only way I can become it is to take this very vast consciousness that I have and bring it down into my physical body. I need to mm. physicalize this energy, this light, because that's the way that I can really share it with the world um, in a much more um, tangible and, and um, viable way so that the planet and humanity can be touched um, in, in the way that they are, which is a, is a three-day world. This is still a 3D world, any way you look at it. And um, so she um, literally, and again, this is their magic. Um, where you and I would go on the internet and go, okay, Lyrica's looking for some help for this project she wants to do. Well, Lyrica just went into oneness, you know, found the number one, numero uno person that would be able to support her better than anyone else, and literally moved her from California to the front room of our living room in Sedona, and who <laughs> should be there. <laughs> And that began a very intensive four-year journey um, of working on her embodiment and her, um, her ascension process with Jessica Martinson, this amazing mentor. Um, and Lyrica wrote something, and she may want to elaborate a little bit, but um, what, no? I'll read what I wrote, okay? <laughs> Just in case she wasn't, uh, in case she wanted to say. So what she wanted to say about this journey um, was that um, today I am much more solid and stable in my body and life. Um, and by the way, those that might follow us on social media, um, I think you can probably pick that up on some of the recent blogs that she's written, but um, I'm now able to use my new abilities to create a life that is soul, S-O-U-L, satisfying and pleasing to me. And here's the kind of dun 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 dun. Um, I love my purpose stream now unfolding in a new book that mom and I are writing about my ascension and embodiment work with Jessica. I'm also happy to share that Jessica, mom and I are developing an embodiment ascension support program for MBAs and their families who might be interested. Nothing's ready yet, but stay tuned. So um, that's kind of our um, future steps to take in terms of purpose and direction. And um, as we have more to offer and share, we'll get it out there. So thanks for <sighs> receiving it. And being, this is kind of like, like the first um, um, revealing or revelation of, of this um, work in process. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. Anything else? I am so excited to have a second book in the flow. And it is a, it's an experiential account, not a visionary teaching. And so hold on to your hats. Fly <laughs> <laughs> with me. <laughs> That's what she's saying. And I think, um, Susan, you may want to um, sort of piggyback on what Lurker just said, because you and Sammy just came through with some kind of a um, sort of similar um, trajectory. Yeah. Trajectory. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. One, one of the things that I mentioned in uh, the chapter that I wrote, and it's also in one of our blogs, actually, I can't remember exactly which one, but uh, that, that these, I call them the kids, but the, these autists as a group, they had shown me that um, what is in plan for humanity uh, so let's look at it from the 3D perspective. So the, the most of humanity has been operating on a 3D, three, third dimensional consciousness and platform. So that means our, our bodies are very, very dense. Uh, and we've been trying to access like all seven dimensions and get it coherent because uh, the human exists in this, uh, the avatar human blueprint is, a, is 12 dimensional. 
So we've really been only operating in the third, uh, the first, second, and third dimensional consciousness. So the star seeds and indigos come in and we're stabilizing, let's say the one to seventh, the first to seventh dimensional consciousness and uh, the autistic avatars, they're holding the seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th dimensional consciousness. And within those dimensions uh, is the, the genetic uh, or what they call the morphogenetic blueprint the, uh, and that's why they talk about the 12, the 12 strands of DNA because we access all 12 of those, we're supposed to access all 12 of those dimensions. So anyway, just to, not to make it too complicated, but so uh, we're, we're getting this first, second, first to the seventh dimension consciousness mm. in body, in our physical body. We have to be able to hold it in our physical body. Um, kind of coherent and aligned. And then the autistics have that uh, seventh to 12th dimensional. And so then we're gonna bridge, we're going to bridge, we're gonna <sighs> connect the two and that's what will exponentially advance humanity uh, as a conscious, not just as a consciousness, but in the physical body, because we have to be able to hold that frequency in our physical body. Because what we've experienced in the past is that the spirit, right? It's as if it's somewhere out there and we have to die in order to access that higher spiritual consciousness. Um, and so what Lyrica has done is to, by embodying that, it's like a template now that we can begin to uh, dismantle or the word that's coming up is nullify uh, the sort of the, the, the imprints that we have in our physical body to be able to uh, access that higher consciousness. And uh, this is projected to, it's already starting to happen just by the being here on the planet, but really the big, the big change is gonna start to happen between 2040 and 2050. Uh, and then between 2040 and 2060, then um, it's going to really change who we are even more. So like we're experiencing the first of that breakdown in 2020 to 2030, roughly around 20, 20, 2030 to 2033, as uh, some of the kids have shown me, you know, we'll kind of stabilize, you know, cause things are breaking down. We're trying to, we're rebuilding simultaneously. And then we'll kind of stabilize uh, at, a, at a certain state, and then there'll be another level of kind of breakdown and rebuilding. And then after that, between like after 2060, uh, we'll really start to see um, humanity will really start to function differently. Uh, and morphogenetically, it will start to exponentially change the, the physical human. So by Lyrica being able to embody in her, in her physical form, um, and she is still aware of that multidimensional aspects, then it's like, it's like creating a pathway, a road map, uh, so to speak. And um, one of the things that came up um, as we were planning for this is that uh, we are needing more of the autistics to embody uh, so that we can prepare for the 2040 um, uh, change in humanity for that merge with the autistics. I see it as like, they showed it to me like, you know, you see the Merkaba uh, or the star tetrahedron, it looks like a pyramid that points up and another pyramid that points down. So it's like the two that's gonna to come together and that will be the, the new blueprint of, for humanity uh, to ascend into. And that's one of the reasons why we were kind of guided to, to uh, offer this. And Sammy is um, you know, going through an embodiment process and uh, you know, Lyrica has it as a template uh, but there is one template, an embodiment template that's kind of unique for her. 
uh, and then there's somewhat something different for each one because as a soul, when you're here, um, you have a different, you have a slightly different uh, energetic gift to offer. So Sammy is going through an embodiment now, and it's uh, it's not easy uh, by any means because you have to get through the density. So what Gail is talking about the the challenges that that they face. Um, it's because it has to get through these dense, dense layers and it's going to uh, kind of what we might call a shoot out anything that, that can't vibrate with that higher, that higher consciousness. Um, but yeah, Lyrica has uh, started a, a, an important process. Anything else you want to add to about that, Gail? Or, or Lyrica? Was that confusing to everybody? <laughs> I'm reading the comments. Yeah, that is, yeah. Somebody said a time frame. Yeah, it definitely. But you know, it's it's kind of yeah. It's it depends on, um, you know, you're kind of shown these trajectories. But definitely, it's not like hard and fast. Uh, we could do it much faster, perhaps, or we can do it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it won't be 2020, 2040. Maybe it'll end up being 2040. But somewhere. In this time frame, that is the uh, that is the, the kind of trajectory, um, and I have to say though that what has opened up now in the dimensionalized field, it's like it's it. This is the way it's going. Like before, we had much more quote, let's say, choice in the sense of how we're going to carve out timelines. Um, but there, there is a very specific trajectory and there are trajectories now for different souls and soul groups, uh, depending on what, where they need to go for more, quote, soul lessons. Uh, and that means like souls that have created a, a lot of distortions in this last epoch. So there is, there is a trajectory for all souls is what I'm trying to say, basically. Gail, sorry. Um, but one thing I will say just from Lyrica's and my experience with this, working with this mentor is that um, through an ascension process, and it's not like the old idea that, you know, you had to be a saint to be ascended or ascending, or you didn't have to die and you had to die. To, that was our belief system. Um, and, and, and yet we're very thankful for the, um, the Jesus and, and all of the um, saints that have gone before us to show us, you know, what's possible and, and, and what, what mm. can be. But um, we feel like um, it's available right here, right now. That, you know, when we really do the work, um, we don't have to wait for a certain amount of time. Um, we, can, we can literally become this now. And, um, and that's... I think a message of hope. I mean, it takes a lot of work, like you said, and it's um, not right. everybody has freedom and the, the support to be able to do that. But um, it's, um, there's no barriers anymore. There's no boundaries. There's no, it's, it's in oneness, everything is possible. And there's, there's no time, you know, it, it can be poof. Um, but I think we're, I think we need to probably get back down, down to earth here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to ask Alex, um, uh, I mean, one of the fascinating things in um, Unsuspected Heroes is, uh, is the uh, part where Ami, you describe, she described states of her consciousness and, and remembering, and I'm curious, Alex, how, how were you inspired to add that those pieces um, into uh, the story? How was I inspired? Um, you know, I when I take a look at this project, I mean, this project, uh, a lot of it obviously has been inspired by Gail and Lyrica, particularly since Amy or Ami. It was Amy, and it when I learned who her name was, origin, um, mm -hmm. it turned into Ami to me. So um, 
you know, a lot of this book was inspired by uh, Gail and Lyrica, and um, absolutely. And, you know, I think I would just like to share a little bit about, you know, why um, their story moved me so that I've invested this much time. And it's not just their story. There are other uh, NBAs involved in this project. And, uh, you know, when I, I mentioned I met them in 2011, and, you know, that was oddly uh, right after somebody on my Facebook page reached out to me and they said, Alex, I think I need to connect the creator of one of your new book trailers with Gail and Lyrica. And um, I think that creator is supposed to create a book trailer for them. And I, uh, you know, so I had just been laid off. And so um, I shared that I created that trailer and Gail and I started talking and she asked me to basically do the book, their, their trailer. And I said, well, send me their book. And uh, they sent me th their book and I started reading it and it started pushing my buttons. And I had almost a, a prophetic experience one night when um, I, you know, I had this habit, I would read and then I would meditate and I was reading their book and, um, and I had on my mind, you know, what am I supposed to do for a living? Uh, a very 3D thing, right? And I read, was reading the book, I took the book, I put it on top of um, my bed and after I was, uh, after I was finished and I went into meditation, I turned my I shut my door to my household, lit my candle, sat in my chair, and about 10 minutes into the meditation, I hear a crash in the room, and I look at the floor. In front of me was the, uh, the book, Autism, which somehow went across the room and landed at my feet. And obviously, I just went, well, there's no accident here. I'm supposed to be in the moment and just do their trailer. But when I think about it now, it's very prophetic, um, not just because six months later, uh, they reached out to me and they said, we went into meditation and we were guided to uh, offer you a contract to help us bring our book into the world. And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. Um, but, you know, and when I think about what I've been doing, right, that, that is pretty prophetic. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you're interested, I'd be happy to share more about working with these other autists. And, um, yeah. How, okay. Yeah, I'd love to hear okay. more about it, yeah. Okay, because actually, you know, I was working with Gail and Lyrica for probably going on three years. And during that time, I did have a... Um, another book, uh, one of my books came out, it was Life Signs. And I remember sending the book to Gail and Lyrica and I, you know, and they read it and Gail would read it aloud to Lyrica. And very quickly I got a note from Gail and she was, um, yeah, we love the book. Couldn't say any, couldn't say enough about it. And then a couple days later, I get a note from Lyrica. And she goes, she said, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, she says, um, if, if I continue with life signs, I'll get stuck in my light tunnel. <laughs> and I just went, what does that mean? But I knew what it meant. I knew that if I continued with that project and marketed it the way I had intended to, um, I wouldn't do what I was supposed to be doing while I'm here. And it was shortly after that, Gail came to me and she says, I think you're supposed to write our story. And I said, I, no, you already have your story <laughs> in, in autism. And uh, so we set it aside, about a year goes by and she brings it up again. And I said, well, let me think about it. And I think I, you know, I had uh, a psychic reading in um, 2014 and I shared some books that I was thinking of writing. 
And she said, Alex, when you described the project with the autistics, and she said, the whole room just lit up. I think you're supposed to do that. So, um, so I did that, but, but you know, I went into this with the intention of writing, you know, four years. This is a four year project. I'd do a book a year and bring them out. Here it is six years later and the first one's coming out. Something happened very early on. And, you know, essentially what happened is I was talking with uh, the mother of uh, one of a, a nonverbal autistic man and we were having these uh, email exchanges and she was sharing all this very sensitive information with me and i said yeah i'm sorry that's my cat um i said um yeah she my cat made me lose my place maybe i'm not supposed to say it <laughs> anyway i said um you know, why do you trust me? You know, you don't know me, really. Why do you trust me? Yeah, and yeah. she just did. But she went to this autistic man and she asked him and she said, why do we trust Alex? And he typed out uh, because she is the, um, the medicine woman. <laughs> And so she, she calls me, she goes, does that make sense to you? And I said, yeah, that's as clear as mud. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it didn't make sense to me, but I started having these exchanges with this man, this autistic man, and it was all, um, it was all facilitated at this point. Uh, facilitated communication and I asked him I was asking him questions he was answering and I had an idea who he was in a past life and I asked him oh, wow. and and he typed out this message and I want to read this for you here I've got it down here okay. so <laughs> it says what's important about me is not who I am where I'm from how I operate or why I'm here. The most important aspect is I hold is what I know. And he says at every moment, I know the cellular program of the entire universe. And then he said, inviting you to tune into that dimension of me for, an, for more of an explanation. And, you know, I started thinking about that and I'm going, okay, this man calls me the medicine woman and he is the cellular sentry of the universe. And, you know, it just reminded me of some psychic readings I had at the turn of the century. And I had these three mm. readings and they were about a year apart. And in each of these readings, and they were with entirely different people. And the first person said that I was a, a planetary healer and I didn't know what that meant. And the second person said that one day I would write um, stories that would expose the secrets of the church. And then oh. the third one said that one day I'd have access to the Akashic records and I would write stories that would reveal the truths about um, things that would heal humanity if they were told. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I started thinking about those, I started thinking about uh, those readings and what this autistic man was sharing with me. And I realized that the autist, yeah. my access to the Akashic records, and I had an opportunity to uh, discover some truths that humanity really uh, hasn't, has been misled. Mm. Uh, and, it just gives me you know, chills. Well, you know, my pro, you know, it's really important that this book, the, uh, the Unsuspected Heroes, one of the reasons I wrote it certainly was to bring light to what the autistics are doing to the planet because it's so meaningful to me. Yeah. But, you know, I do want to expose the truths about 
um, some, some things that could heal the planet. And, you know, lastly, and probably just as importantly, you know, I want to give the reader an opportunity to have a journey of awakening to understand who they are. Because right. that is so important. And so it's what's needed today in the planet. Everyone needs to wake up to the realization that, oh, my God, we are part of the one. We are the one. Okay. And so that that to me is um what i'm interested in, in this book is to move of course your message out into the world and of course yeah and i think and i think um what you're talking about the idea of synchronicities uh you know and i'm sure gail has experienced that you know we've all experienced that uh that tell you that this is the path um that you're supposed to take you know mm -hmm. uh, and and that's what uh, what you just described just kind of speaks to that. Um, that part of the awakening is to uh, also then awaken to the subtle signs that are all around you to, to guide us, you know, uh, on this awakening journey, on this real soul journey uh, mm -hmm. that humanity has, has forgotten uh, who we are. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the book because um, as a parent, you know, I could experience the 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 inner turmoil. You know that uh, you know experienced um, the the wow moments. You know, like oh my gosh, this is really not what you know we thought <laughs> at all. Uh, and then the other character, kind of what you're describing, I guess I think is is Levi, um, and uh, who's not a parent, but somehow being uh, guided on on a path uh, with me and um, so there's a lot in it and it is uh, somebody was asking if is it, if this is fiction if your book is fiction uh, fiction or uh, nonfiction and it's it's fiction but based on real life stories of autistics and, and let me just say it's not uh, it, that's not quote just uh, about Gail and Lyrica. Some of it uh, sounds like like a parallel, but it does it goes off in in a different uh, different directions. Mm -hmm. And the ending is a cliffhanger. I was like, what? <laughs> what is the next one coming out? <laughs> no, what happened? What's going to happen next? So there is um, there are some really uh, touching moments as a as a parent. If you're quote not a parent. Uh, there's another character to identify with and uh, the, your own inner awakening journey if you're quote not a, not a parent um, and you're just well everybody is shifting on the planet to get different stages so there's a lot for I feel I feel like there's a lot for everyone and if you like superhero hero stories you know the uh, like the title unsuspected heroes they are um kind they are the unsuspected heroes so mm -hmm. uh, uh oh yeah, yeah somebody's asking can we get a list of the resources and books yeah at the end i'll be sharing a slide with um uh, gail's email and alex's website uh, and how you can get these books anyway and there's there's tons more uh material um, so Randy is asking, can we pretend it's like 1020? Uh, <laughs> I know the, uh, it's, it's, we can go in so many different directions in this conversation. I mean, I, I've got, you know, we're trying to stay focused, uh, trying to stay focused on the conversation because it is, um, there's so many different pathways and I, I think it just highlights that each of us are on our path and, uh, we are all playing a part playing a part in this for humanity because the more that we can release ourselves from old paradigm beliefs and uh, release ourselves from the uh, quote limited time matrix let's say the more we we assist in the healing for for everyone because it is a collective we are one uh, and that's one thing that uh, I should bring up too is that because this collective consciousness 
feel like they are they are like a role model since humanity has not known what it's what it's like to operate as a collective consciousness they are sort of like a role model for what collective consciousness means and we don't understand it with the mind but we experience it uh, with our soul and our spirit energetically and that's one of the biggest things by connecting with this collective consciousness that it changes you know in 2017 when i started that quote planetary synthesis thing that i wasn't really quite sure what i was doing but it was like what i was being told to do um you know i could feel the group uh the group consciousness coming in and really even connecting through my neurology through the uh the brain stem and it and in Lyrica's book will do it too in these books uh as and so will alex's book they start to mold your your consciousness so that it doesn't have to be so hard to try and understand it with the mind and the more we can let go of the mind and allow ourselves to feel the energy to feel their presence it starts to change even your perceptions and the way you think and and what you what you believe so that is a big reason to um that is another reason i think to connect with this uh, collective unified field of these autistic avatars because it just starts to change your um your uh your neurology you know carl will tell me people aren't going to understand that you know what you're saying none of that because to me it's like oh of course it's you know it's so uh it becomes like oh it's it's just uh what do you call it it's i can't, can't even think anymore you know it's so common sense to me you know uh but I, then i have to remember like okay well my consciousness has changed so much that things that seem like common sense to me may not be where most people are in. and that's not to put anybody down uh, but it's it's because of the energy field uh, that I've I've been in, and I think um, what Alex is saying too, um, uh, and Gail and Lyrica, what Gail is saying, just the the enlightened um, state that you come into by uh, connecting with these amazing, amazing souls. So um, let me see, uh, anybody else got, yeah. It's 1126, let me see what other. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Randy says, yeah, Kate constantly has having to remind me to learn with my heart, not my mind. Um, Pamela, thanks everyone. Uh, uh, Pamela says goodbye. Uh, there, was a, there was a question. Um, I know I'm not going to get to everybody's comments here. There was a question from someone about the uh, oh, um, the autistics and the Ab and the Aspergers. Yeah. So uh, Kate says in a session I had with Susan, she said that people with Aspergers are a bridge to the nonverbal autistics who come into the planet. I have Aspergers, and after my Kundalini activated two years ago, I felt like I have started walking up to the realized part of my soul purpose is to be a wife and mother of things I had never thought I would be able to do. So my question is, do you see that more Asperger's people who have been awakening in our adults will be having and raising high vibe children? Hmm, boy. Uh, I say um, it still depends on the, I feel like it's a yes for you, Kate, but um, it's still uh, it's still a very much an individual. Yeah, I can't say yes for all of that group. Um, so let me add about the autistics and the uh, Aspergers. What I was shown was that um, so if you it just energetically, if you imagine a, the grid, there's horizontal. Uh, energy grid that goes horizontally and then there's vertical grid right and that's what makes the grid is it's the two um, that go vertically and then horizontally so what I was shown is that 
the Asperger's individuals were carving the, the horizontal pathway and uh, in order for the very high vibe autists or nonverbal autistics to come, come through and have something, something different to anchor to rather than the third dimensional um, uh, grid that we have been existing on. Uh, and that's, that's what allowed them to maintain their higher vibrational consciousness is not having to um, basically anchor to the 3D uh, grid, if that makes sense. Now, any other final comments from uh, Gail or Lyrica, Alex, before we wind down? Uh, yeah, buy the book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so buy the book. Um, there, yeah, there. Uh, I, um, I was, I was, I was really, I really loved uh, Alex's book. I mean, I was, um, I didn't have a lot of time to read, and I was in the middle of my stuff with our book, you know, our chapter, and all this, the the, the pre summit launch, and all these other things going on. But um, you know, I started reading it, and. You know, it was, I was able to read it pretty quickly. It moved pretty fast to me because I'm a slow reader. Uh, and it did took me, take me a couple of months um, to finish it, but I was like excited, you know, uh, to get back to it. And, and Gail Lyrica's book, I mean, even if you don't understand the words uh, of what it's saying, the energy, the vibration of it is so vast that uh, even if you start by reading a paragraph, or opening to a section, you know, it, it just starts to change the vibration uh, in your in your mind and I think uh, in your home. So let me share this uh, about how to contact um, contact everyone. So yeah, this is the um, information. I won't go to large screen because then it kind of loses. Uh, but yeah, if anybody is interested in how to uh, get the book from Gail and Lyrica. Uh, any other final comments, Gail and Lyrica? I just, oh. I just wanted to say thank every, I just want to thank everyone for being here and expressing interest in this and thank all of you for what you're doing for the, with the planet. And Lyric and I would um, piggyback on that, Alex. Um, you know, Lyric is 44 years old, and to look at what's happened between the time she was born and autism was one in 10,000, and to where we are now, and particularly since we've just come out of this kind of five year <laughs> inward period and come out and see all the explosion of things that are happening everywhere with the Arizona typers, all these websites, all these, you know. It's astounding. I know we have a long way to go, but um, mm. wow, look how far we've come. Look what everyone's doing. Before, Lyric and I, and, mm. and actually I want to mention one other um, pioneer here, and that is um, Adrian Christie put out the very first Bright Light book mm -hmm. about what has a child of eternity. It's really not in print, although it may be available um, you know, through Amazon, mm. through um, second books or whatever. But, um, but they also were a big pioneer in this um, whole process and wow it's just it's it just shows when you when you step into the truth the truth picks you up and it sort of carries mm. the momentum because this truth wants to get out there and mm. so everybody that steps into the sort of the funnel the the um toroidal field of this um and says i'm open to purpose i'm open to doing my part you know be careful because you're going to get spun in <laughs> and uh, maybe spun around a little bit, but um, we need you all and you're all doing a fabulous job. So thank you so, so much. Yeah, and I, I agree. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, I have Adria's book. Uh, I got it used uh, through Amazon. But yeah, it's not in print, but yeah, you, I was able to get it used. And uh, I haven't had a chance to really read through all of it, but yeah, I open it up, I open up sections and she's uh, de definitely vibrating uh, well, I mean, she is vibrating very high, and there's a lot of really beautiful uh, information 
and uh, perspectives. So, yeah, thank you everyone. I mean, thank you for joining us. And again, this will be on our YouTube channel and also you'll be able to um, download the audio version of it through our, uh, our podcast. And we hope that you will, you know, share it, uh, share it, share it, share it everywhere and anywhere that you, that you can, even if people don't want to listen, I don't know, <laughs> maybe that's not that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, and as, as, as parents, if you're um, trying to gra grasp um, what might be happening with your, quote, high vibrational autistic avatar, um, even if nobody else on the outside believes you, um, it's, um, it's amazingly powerful if you do. And if you just say to them, I, I believe in you, I see you as a soul, um, it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. And the families, you, you are um, facilitating an incredible uh, evolutionary pathway here. So um, uh, our lives are challenging, but it's incredibly, incredibly rewarding and fulfilling too. So I've had a similar experience like you had said where I just could feel like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And then you just feel their presence and it's like, oh, okay, all right. I can keep going. <laughs> so, and the more that you can join um, and, and be in touch with other uh, like-minded people, that is tremendously helpful as well. So thank you all very much. And um, yeah, I hope that, you know, maybe we can do this again uh, with uh, uh, other people and other groups here. And we'd love to uh, uh, have uh, Gail and Lerica talk about their upcoming book, you know, in the future. And Helen and Zhao, um, they have a wonderful book out as well. So um, we'd love to talk with Helen sometimes. And um, Lori Sheyu, uh, thank you very much for all the work that you are doing. And Marissa um, and Laura Granberg Bush for the work that you're doing on, on Facebook. And Malena and uh, Lucy, Nick, yeah, I feel you, Nick. Hi, Nick. And Connie and Daniel. I mean, there's so many of you out there um, that have been incredibly supportive and just being in connection with uh, parents like all of you has helped me tremendously. So thank you very much, everyone, and stay safe. And we are doing it. Thank you.